I'm Kate Andrews, and here's a look at what is going on this week in the news. And we begin from the Vatican. Following the arrest last week of two people who leaked confidential Vatican documents, two books have been published using the information. But Pope Francis says that will not divert him from his reform work. From reports, has more. For the very first time, Pope Francis publicly addressed the recent leak of confidential Vatican documents on financial matters of the Holy See. He did so before thousands of people in St. Peter's Square during his Sunday Angelus Prayer. The content of those documents, the Pope said, were not a surprise to him or his advisors, since it was the Pope himself who asked for the information precisely to assess it and make changes. Improvements, he said, are underway, and despite the breach of confidence, that will not deter those reforms from moving forward. Perciò voglio assicurarvi che questo triste fatto non mi distoglie certamente dal lavoro di riforma che stiamo portando avanti con Dal, dal lavoro di riforma che stiamo portando avanti con i miei collaboratori e con il sostegno di tutti voi. Sì, con il sostegno di tutta la Chiesa, perché la Chiesa si rinnova con la preghiera e con la santità quotidiana De ogni battisato. As usual, the Pope calls on all Christians to pray for him and for the Church, asking them to not be discouraged from these type of unnecessary distractions. In news from Rome, Pope Francis ordained a new auxiliary bishop of Rome. The ordination of Bishop Angelo de Donatus took place November 9th at the Basilica of St. John Lateran. November 9th is also the feast of the dedication of the Basilica, which serves as the Roman Diocese Cathedral. During the ceremony, Pope Francis asked the bishops three, bishop three things, patience, mercy, and short, clear homilies. His Holiness said that homilies should be the transmission of God's grace, so they should be simple so that everyone can understand and will want to become a better person. He also asked the new bishop to defend the family. In news from around the world, the president of Poland is talking about plans for Pope Francis' upcoming trip to the country. His Holiness will be there for World Youth Day. From reports, has more. Pope Francis met with Polish President Andrzej Duda ahead of next year's World Youth Day celebration in Krakow, Poland. The president is known to be a devout Catholic, and he was visibly moved by meeting the Pope. He greeted him in Italian. When they sat down to meet and the noise from several cameras filled the room, the two shared a laugh. World Youth Day 2016 will take place in the Polish city of Krakow next July. They discussed the upcoming event, along with the relationship between the church and Polish society. Other issues almost came up during the meeting, the conflict in Ukraine, ongoing violence in the Middle East, and the refugee crisis. The two exchanged gifts after their private talks. Pope Francis gave the president a St. Martin medallion, along with a Polish-language copy of his encyclical. The Pope received an image of Mary and Jesus from Poland. As they departed, Pope Francis asked the president's wife and daughter to pray for him. He then stopped and had a longer conversation with the president. The president told the press that the Pope plans to visit the Marian Shrine of Our Lady of Chestakova, as well as the Auschwitz concentration camp.
In news from around the country, the Bishop of Wichita, Kansas, presented a report on the life, virtues, and holiness of Father Emil Capuan to the Congregation for Saints' Causes. Bishop Carl Kemi met with Cardinal Angelo Amato, Prefect for the Congregation. The meeting took place a week after the 65th anniversary of the Army Chaplain's capture in North Korea. During the Korean War, Father Kapuan and other members of his regiment were captured by Chinese troops. The priest died in a North Korean prison camp in 1951. President Barack Obama presented the Medal of Honor posthumously to the war hero priest in 2013. Archbishop Marcello Bartolucci, secretary of the congregation, said that usually theologians would not get to a report for at least 10 years. However, since Father Capuan is the first sainthood candidate from Wichita, it gets precedence. He said he's hoping to get the report on the commission's calendar for late 2017. Well, that's going to do it for news. I'm Katie Andrews. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.